In the last few decades, the scientists have discovered quite a lot of incredible objects, and many such objects we didn't even know were possible or existed up until relatively recently. So, for example, back in the early 90s, the idea of what we now refer to as a brown dwarf was actually as theoretical as, for example, dark matter. The scientists believed that they could be possible and that they maybe could exist somewhere out there, but because nobody has ever found one, quite a lot of scientists did not actually think brown dwarfs really existed. And this story has been repeated in astronomy many times. Today we know that even black holes at some point were just believed to be theoretical and not physically possible, and were only discovered decades later after the original theoretical proposition. But today we know that brown dwarfs are real. And as a matter of fact, some of the closest objects to the solar system turn out to be brown dwarfs. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing yet another unusual mystery and somewhat unusual observation discovered in a distant brown dwarf that has never really been observed in any other similar object before, and a phenomenon that currently does not have a very good explanation. With all of this, as always, published in a paper you can find in the description below. But I guess first, a quick review for those of you who might not actually know what a brown dwarf is. And I think this illustration right here can kind of help you imagine them. So a brown dwarf is essentially something between a typical gas giant, so an object like Jupiter, and an actual star, like our own Sun. An object that's sometimes referred to as a failed star because these objects do not fuse hydrogen on the inside. And the first one that was ever discovered was this one right here, originally found back in 1995. And as soon as the scientists realized these objects do exist, they started to find more and more. As a matter of fact, quite a lot of new discoveries were made in just a few years after that first finding. They even found brown dwarfs emitting different X-rays, they discovered the brown dwarf that seemed to even contain an exoplanet around it, in this case the object referred to as 2M1207b, with the most exciting discovery being made in 2014 of the object you see right here. Today we refer to this as Loman 16 a binary brown dwarf system that you can see moving across the night skies right here, that's essentially the closest brown dwarf to us. Extremely close, one of the closest objects we have. Just over 6 light years away from us, or just a little bit farther than the Alpha Centauri system. Which of course already makes this object extremely exciting. And it's not just one object, it's two different brown dwarfs in a binary orbit, and the scientists have already studied them quite extensively, with several studies you can find in some of the previous videos in the description below. But as more and more brown dwarfs are discovered, the scientists started to realize several things. First of all, it's not really a good name for them. It's extremely unlikely that any of them are really brown. A lot of them seem to be dark orange, many of them seem to be magenta, and some of them might be dark purple. But secondly, as you can see here again, they are actually quite different, with many of them requiring their own category. Specifically because of the way that the mass works inside these objects and the properties they acquire because of this mass. So by definition, a brown dwarf is something that does not have hydrogen fusion yet and cannot become a star. But it's an object that's at least 13 masses of Jupiter because at this point it can actually start fusing deuterium, the heavier isotope of hydrogen which then starts to produce heat on the inside. And so if any object starts to burn deuterium, just like the sun burns hydrogen, by definition it becomes a brown dwarf. But this object still has to be at least 13 masses of Jupiter in terms of mass. But at some point, once they get even more massive, and here we're talking about approximately 65 masses of Jupiter, they can also start fusing lithium as well which kind of turns them into possibly completely different objects. But even in between these two masses, there are still a lot of other additional properties that many of them seem to have, which of course means that we just really don't know much about these objects yet, and there's just so much to learn. But so far, many of these discoveries were mostly accidental, and the one that we're talking about today was very accidental as well. It was actually part of what's known as Odyssea, or maybe Odyssey, eh, not sure. Anyway, it's the Ophiuchus Disk Survey Employing ALMA, a project that's basically trying to study various types of star-forming regions in the Ophiuchus Molecular Cloud. This absolutely gorgeous star-forming region, approximately 450 light years away from us, that's essentially the closest such region to the solar system, the closest region where stars are formed, and the region the scientists really want to understand better. But because this is the closest such region to the solar system, it's been studied quite thoroughly already. For example, we know that there are approximately 3000 solar masses of various types of gas in here, and several hundred various star-forming regions have already been identified 
by using various infrared telescopes and seeing various infrared spots. And while investigating this region and trying to discover more objects, the scientists behind recent study accidentally discovered an unusual expanding cloud, or an expanding shell of carbon monoxide that was discharged by something with relatively low temperature in the middle, with the shell itself expanding away from the central region, but in a way that's not really been seen before or did not really have a very good explanation. Okay, I know someone really clever in the comments is going to say, oh, so it was a space fart. Yeah, pretty much. Except that it was carbon monoxide space fart. But it also did not have a very good explanation. But finding something like this, and also not having an explanation, usually means that we either discovered something completely new and never seen before, or there is something in the center, but it's just extremely difficult to detect. And while the answer in this case does seem to be the latter, there was an object that's been identified in this region that seems to be very very dim and seems to resemble some kind of a brown dwarf. A brown dwarf that's about 5% the mass of our own sun, surrounded by the unusual carbon monoxide shell as if it sort of escaped from the surface, with the object in the middle very likely being approximately 50 to maybe 55 masses of Jupiter. But what makes this more mysterious is of course the shape. It's what the scientists refer to as semi-spherical, not entirely spherical, very different from a typical emission we expect from an object exploding in the middle, like a supernova, or some kind of a major emission coming from the center. Which of course created a problem because it was kind of difficult to explain this. And at first the scientists thought that maybe this is an emission from a nearby star, or maybe this is just a gas that formed around this object through some kind of a gravitational activity, but it doesn't seem to be the case. It does seem like this particular gas is coming from the center where this brown dwarf was discovered, but in a very unusual, somewhat skewed way, as if maybe something exploded on the surface of this brown dwarf, or it lost mass for some other reason, and is actually still losing mass right now as well, or because it's evolving into something else. Which shouldn't really come as a surprise because we're still just learning about these objects and what actually happens inside and around them, especially because some of the more major discoveries were really only made in the last 8 years. But one of the most likely explanations provided so far does involve the idea of deuterium or maybe even lithium suddenly exploding on the inside and essentially starting some kind of an extremely vigorous nuclear reaction on the inside that's suddenly evaporating a lot of particles and a lot of gas on the surface and is emitting these particular gases because the object suddenly warmed up or because there's more pressure coming from the inside. But that's of course just a hypothesis, and in reality nobody really knows what's happening around this object. Which probably means that the scientists discovered something new. Something we've never seen before, a completely new phenomenon. Which also means that once they figure out what's happening here, or once they propose something else more interesting, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video, because at the moment we don't really know what's happening. And so on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, Check out some of the previous videos on this topic and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.